So uh, just on the screen, if you can see the screen now, uh, these are the topics which we are going to learn. Okay. And the, the course prerequisite is like uh, uh, the, the person should be uh, familiar with basic cloud technologies. Like for example, you, uh, you should know how to create a VM in, in any cloud. Okay. It doesn't matter that, okay, you are, uh, you, you are working on Azure or GCP or only AWS. That's fine. Like, like uh, what we are planning is we will, we'll focus more on the Terraform side. Okay. And when you are, when you're working in the industry and all, you are not limited to any single cloud. So let's say you are going to one company, they are more on Azure centric. Okay. But when you apply on a different company, there will be AWS centric and all. So you have to be rise above the technologies and you have to focus more on the, uh, the fundamentals of it. Okay. The Terraform. So you, you shouldn't limit yourself to one cloud provider. Okay. So our, our aim on this training will be like that to keep, to, to ensure that the person is after this training, he can build any resource. Let's say if, some, if somebody is asking to create a Azure functions, you can do that. Or if somebody is asking to create a GCP VM, you, you can able to do that with, with bare minimum documentation from Terraform. Okay. It is not like, not like that. You can remember everything and all you have to obviously look to the resources from the Terraform site. Okay. So. May I know what is the context and what is the duration of this course? Yeah, it will be total around uh, th spread across 30 hours. It will be there. Okay. And our course will be like, uh, you can say 40% theory and 60% practicals will be there. And for each topic which we are going to touch, there will be equivalent uh, practical will be there. And all the code will be available to all of you through the GitHub. Okay. So the person has to be a little bit familiar with the Git commands. We will anywhere towards the middle of the uh, course, we will, we will uh, revisit the Git. Okay. And uh, only the limited ones, like for example, to do our task in Terraform, what all Git commands we need, we will go through that. And uh, from a pipeline point of view, like Azure DevOps also, little bit user has to be aware. If they are not aware, we will uh, we'll cover that as well. But uh, that is towards the middle of the uh, training. Okay. Once we are familiar with the fundamental part and all, we are able to create all those things in an isolated way. Then we will see all these things in a connected way. How to do that? Okay, my next question is: mm -hmm. the people don't have the background of that uh, programming language. Yes, what yes, percentage yes. they could be able to grasp this course? Because if I take, take an example of mine, I don't have that much of past experience correct, in coding. Correct. Yeah. So going most to terraform. Yeah. Correct, correct. I got so it. Terraforming, how would going to be a going to grasp it? Because some programming languages like it needs to so need to be need, need to put so focus on need to be get practice. But correct, in this correct. form of terraform, yeah. what is going to be for a layman like us? Yeah, yeah, sure. Like so if, even for me also, if you say I'm not a developer background, I am from a system admin. Okay. So I I have uh, fifteen plus years experience in the system admin in various uh, platform in Windows, in uh, Unix, Linux, okay, in VMware and all those. So I'm being from a system admin point of view, like even uh, a, a core, I'm, I'm not a core uh, developer and all. Okay. But now, now, nowadays, in recent past, you see a lot of programming languages are coming, which are declarative in nature. Okay. Like for example, the puppet, or when you build something in Azure, let's say Azure ARM, ARM templates, I think maybe some of you have used it. So anybody familiar with the Azure ARM templates? So, yeah, Azure ARM templates is quite difficult when you're going yeah. to the variables and creating the correct, correct, yes. yeah. Because so, in Terraform, I just yeah. differentiated with the Terraform and the Azure ARM template. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to write and very easy to understand. It's just like a things what is being in their uh, cloud, we are creating a GUI. But when compared to that Terraform uh, ARM template, it's going to be a little bit. Uh, complexity is there. Correct, I just want to understand basically yeah. on that. Yeah. So if you compare the, the programming languages such as the ARM templates, okay, or Puppet, Chef, okay, uh, so these all are coming under the category of declarative programming, okay, so a, a new form of programming which is coming, which is more of declarative in nature, okay, that means that you don't have to do everything step by step, like how we do in the normal functional programming, in your Java or your Perl or C or those those languages, you have to do everything step by step, right? For each each task to go to the end result, you have to code everything. But 
the terra form and any other the declarative forms of languages we don't have to code each and every step okay what, what we are going to code is okay what should be the end result what do we want as the end result and it will do it for us okay so these are therefore you don't have to be a very uh, like a high end developer as such so this this needs a very less programming knowledge uh, as compared to other programming for example your uh, javascript java or c or all those okay so it is not like that these programmings uh, in general the declarative programmings uh, puppet chef okay or or this terraforming in particular they are not like that okay so uh, i hope that answers your query right yeah thanks for the clarification i appreciate it thank you no problem okay so i i think uh, some more persons also joined in between so i, I will just uh, quickly say, uh, like give the intro that my name is ranjit naik and i will i'll be the uh, trainer for the entire training period and this today is only a demo session uh, like and we will cover what what are we going to do uh, in the entire uh, 30 hours like what we are planning for the entire training duration and we will see what what is uh, terraform what are the benefits of it okay and and all those things we will learn in today's class the demo class we will have some practical demo as well okay so in this entire training program we we are going to learn a lot of things lot of components within the terraform okay and uh, some of the primary topics uh, will be iac i think you, you might have come across this word or iac like infrastructure as code okay so that is the fundamental of terraform and all all of the new kind of uh, programming language which is coming ansible puppet chef these all are come these are all falling under iac infrastructure as code okay so where your infrastructure is codified got it so these all that, that we will learn and then we will see we'll we'll go through the uh, terraform benefits and we'll do the installation part of it how to install the terraform and what all tools to tools will be needed to start across like we can start so can some more joiners so there no and then we will go through the terraform block okay so terraform temp or you can say the manifest whatever the coding is there there is a special syntax for it and uh, so we will go through that we will go through the important blocks the terraform blocks the provider blocks which is very important which we will spend more time on it and then we will go to the third topic which is the resources this is the actual the, the this is the actual uh, topic where we will we will spend a bulk of time in it okay this space in this uh, module you are going to do, create a lot of things in the public cloud okay you you might create a azure web app you might create a, a lambda service in aws you can create a gcp vm all these things you can do th in this module okay we are going to do all that okay and uh, and then we will go through the uh, terraform uh, state files okay so this is a very important concept uh, in the terraform so this we are going to spend a lot of time here as well uh, the topic 4 and then we will come to terraform modules so the modules is that uh, we we can create uh, a reusable code blocks okay to be consumed by other programs or by other users okay so this we, we will spend time on that and then terraform expression and functions and again functions say you don't uh, think like regular functions of how it is there in python and java and all it's it's quite limited so we we cannot create our own functions and all whatever uh, built in functions are there within terraform so that that is only we are going to cover okay so it, it's not extensive uh, language like python and all okay and then uh, we will see the other uh offerings from terraform okay so uh, terraform cloud and terraform enterprise so this we will try to understand and in this section we will integrate our uh, code flow in the vcs because by this module we are already we know how to create a resource and all we know iac so then we will integrate that with the version control and uh, do end to end pipeline creation and all that we will we will do on that uh, topic 8 and towards 9 again we will continue that in the uh, azure devops integration and we will 
uh, have an intro to the Azure DevOps. And ag again, Azure DevOps is a big tool. So in that, we are going to learn the things which will be required for us for a Terraform person okay, to know. For example, mainly the uh, Azure, repo uh, Azure repos will be there in that. And uh, we will create the pipelines. So these two topics we will cover more. And uh, we will have a... Uh, in parallel, we will have a, uh, the topics covered in the certification exam as well. So we will just ensure that, okay, we are touch basing, we are touching all the topics and we are not skipping anyone, any topics as well. So that's, that we will we'll keep on reviewing uh, periodically just to be uh, sure that we are on track. Okay. And uh, towards the end of the phase nine, uh, we will have a uh, complex uh, integration end to end we will will build it ourselves okay so these are all the topics any queries till now on the topics part Ranjit, uh, are we doing the any pipeline in the aws with the help of terraform so aws we are not covering in that we will do the azure devops one which is much widely used okay so the concept will be similar you can Check it out. So, uh, Ranjit, this is Chinmay here. I have yes. one query. Actually, yeah. you have mentioned like uh, we will practice Terraform in non-cloud environment as well, like on-prem or at the localized machine. Yeah. So, so when, uh, in what uh, particular part of this uh, course are we covering it? I mean, no, in the local. Or? Uh, yeah. So, okay. local, like it, it is not like a other programming languages, okay, where you code something and it will show you for that, okay. So it is the Terraform as such is mainly a provisioning tool, okay, and currently widely used for the cloud uh, builds. It, it can also be used for the on-premises build as well in the VMware, but that is something I cannot show you live in that, okay. So I can show you which all resources you can use, how to code that uh, the, VM, the VMware builds as well, but we cannot practice it. Okay, but currently all the industry trend, whatever we are seeing or in the industry, or the tool is being used mainly for the cloud provisioning part. Okay, so it is uh, used for the infrastructure build. So infrastructure doesn't limit you on only on the VM. Okay, doesn't limit you till the VM. Okay. You can uh, Terraform can manage much higher objects as well. For example, you have to create a SQL database and all. You can create that using Terraform. You have to create a Docker or a Kubernetes cluster. You can create that using Terraform as well. Okay, so it can do a number of uh, higher level objects as well. <clears throat> so that all that uh, they tell it like a infra. Okay, so, so one more query actually within the labs or during the session, yeah. are we also going to uh, practice uh, on launching that Kubernetes cluster uh, no. or some example that Docker or not? Yeah, Docker we can we can do that. Okay, so. Our main focus is, is on learning the Terraform part, okay? And how to use it is up to you all. Like uh, some some person might be use, using it to manage some SaaS service or maybe past services. Some, some persons may be working on the AD side, so they want to use it more on the AD side, okay? So our examples will mm -hmm. be mainly on the web app and the Azure and the VM side, okay? AWS, GCP, or the Azure VMs we will create and all in the subnetting network, VPC, everything we will create in that web apps we will create in that and all okay but again giving all the examples is not possible in, in that time period so I, I will show you like what is the uh, second. Uh, but, okay so that means each provider is like a kind of a this this one aws is one provider azure is one provider like these many providers are there okay so Cisco, even networking, many things are there in that. Uh, Kubernetes are there in that and all. So again, Oracle Cloud and all, you can create Oracle databases as well. Everything you can do, wherever the any software or or any cloud has got a API integration, okay? So those can be managed by Terraform, got it? So again, it won't be possible for to check each and every provider to do that, uh, but we will touch base on mainly on the uh -huh. primary ones. Hello, was there any question? Okay. 
रंजीत रंजीत क्वेश्चन आफ्टर दिस कोर्स आफ्टर दिस कोर्स आर बी एबल टू परफॉर्म एनी लाइक सबनेट क्वेश्चन रिसोर्स ग्रुप क्वेश्चन एंड एवलिटी जोन सपोज वी नीड टू क्रिएट अ डिफरेंट थ्री एवलिटी जोन इन दम दन टेराफॉर्म सो वी कैन डू आफ्टर वी कैन वी कैन डू राइट फॉर ऑल फॉर ऑल थ्री क्राउस yes 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 yeah definitely so uh, after this is done so when you are aware of the resources modules part and all yeah definitely you can do all these okay but like uh, everything is not in inherent to the native programming you have to see the resources so let's say if you have to create uh, a azure function okay or a lambda function and all you have to go to that uh, terraform registry only you have to go to that specific uh, resource and you have to see what all how to declare that resource what all things are needed so definitely you you can you, you can do all those okay for the vpc vnet and all these and do that and uh, we will mainly use so these will be Sorry? so these whatever the resource hmm? will get so it will be uh, different for different different clouds right like yeah yes definitely it will be different for each each cloud so but the fundamental will be same like how you create the resource and all so the block will be same the resource block the name will be different for the aws it will be different mm -hmm. azure rm for aws it will be different but inside that the logic will be same what all attributes are needed similar will be there here and there some difference will be there okay so that's why we are going to learn the main fundamental of it the terraform side how to code the resources and all and using that you can do anything like whichever resource you want so maybe you are working in devops or you are applying for the terraform job and all so it's not like that you will get only a single specific job okay maybe uh, some day some project is coming they want on gcp next day some project is coming they want on aws okay so you we cannot say that okay being a devops that okay i, I have to learn that technology okay so it's not like that you can learn each and every technology whichever is there you have to know the central core like how the terraform is functioning using that you can build whatever uh, requirement is coming okay uh rajit i just yeah. wanted to ask a very naive question yeah. uh can you please uh, uh, elaborate me uh, under which umbrella terraform is coming like uh, let's take an example on devops uh, uh, i mean uh, such as uh, the cloud is also there so yeah. i mean it comes in which layer um it is a top layer of all those stuff or it is a parallel layer of that i just wanted to understand that uh, yeah. sorry if i'm a question yeah, yeah, my no, question no, is sorry. you know is wrong yeah yeah okay. that's fine yeah, yeah. we'll cover that just now in the next slide it will be there so let me start okay. through the demo slide okay so let's see what what is terraform actually is okay so terraform is an infrastructure as code tool so infrastructure as code when we say uh it is a codified view of your infrastructure okay so in in past like years ago when we build when we used to build the machine uh, the server you have to rack and stack it on on some hardware rack okay and uh, your infrastructure was like that and slowly when the vmware technologies came the virtualization came uh, we we can create multiple vms and all in a single Uh, single hardware blade or single hardware uh, server okay so now again being going to the cloud now things are again moving towards the cloud all the projects everything a uh, lot of uh, migrations are happening to the cloud so this tool uh, or any in general the isc tool or any, any isc tool for example you can take azure arm templates or uh, aws also has its uh, cloud formation or the google gcp has its own tool as well so all these tools are infrastructure as code so you you code you codify your requirements how the infrastructure should look like in the target okay maybe you want a uh, is a medium range server 2 cpu 4 gb and you want some that server to be part of some specific network and subnet all those things you want a specific web service to be there on those so all these things Uh, you are codifying in a in a flat file like that in a file you are codifying that out that that is my target environment that it should look like that okay so that is the isc okay so 
infrastructure as a code like it is a practice of defining and when you provision the infrastructure resources through a codified format okay so when once your code is in once your infrastructure is in a form of a code or in a form of a file then what you can do is you can you can version control it okay for uh, so that that is to eliminate one of the pain points so going rewinding back actually some 5 to 10 years ago how it was happening is that uh, for example you created one server okay uh, and it, it is used for the development environment okay now once the development is done you want to take it to qa you want to replicate the environment to qa then stage and then production so how it was being done is you have to capture all the details in form of some excel sheet and you have to give it to the next level okay whoever is managing the stage side or the production side or the operations team you have to hand, hand it over to them or the build team okay so all these were happening through through form of uh, inventory sheet or or some form of change management okay all, all that so that was consuming a lot of time all the manual builds were happening it, it was going time it was taking more time and again from one environment to other when you are replicating environment from dev to qa to stage and all there are chances that you will miss some of the changes okay so it it was not guaranteed that your environment will be 100% consistent across all the environments so consistency was a problem uh, in that and again the life cycle management was a pain actually so in in cloud also wherever the isc is not implemented in cloud so when companies started going to cloud they they found it actually so easy it is e very easy to uh, go out of bounds actually go out of control to create hundreds some thousands of vm okay because uh, you don't have any capital uh, investment to be done in that so it is very easy to build a lot of uh, servers and all and uh, let's say some servers were built it was the poc or some development was done and after that the project got dismantled nobody is aware what who is using that environment how to decommission it nobody knows what will be the impact of decommissioning that what are the components connected to it so so to avoid all, uh, these issues uh, life cycle management was a pain point actually in if when we don't do the things in the isc form okay and again the infra changes are not documented in a proper manner so uh, throughout the throughout the let's say your environment when it is in qa phase and a lot of changes might have gone so some changes might have skipped uh, for documentation might not been recorded so when you do this when you take all that changes to stage then it will be a problem like your environment won't be consistent okay and uh, changes in infra components usually take a long time like uh, when you have to do something a cpu change or or some you have to uh, increase change the vnet subnet or anything like that it was a time consuming so iac resolves these all lot of problems okay so iac let it be in general the infrastructure as code uh, not only terraform okay maybe uh, puppet ansible chef or the arm templates so they they address all these pain points okay so first of all your your entire infrastructure will be in a codified format you you, you will code it then once it is in the codified format then it is very easy for you to version control it okay you can use git or whichever version control tool you want okay so in that way you don't have to do a lot of documentation of all the changes happening they are all are recorded in the in your version control itself and uh, when your environment is in form of code now you, it is very easy for you to replicate it you have, you can use the same code file to build a multiple environments okay dev maybe dev qa stage and all you are using the same file across the different environments by different variables okay by different input variables okay. so that that uh, that removes a lot of manual or uh, typos or errors in that case so repeatability efficiency and consistency these three things are improved when we use the iac and uh, again delay in provisioning when when we have to do through the manual way let's say you have to do in a 20 20 vms you have to do uh, maybe you have to resize the vms okay through portal so if you are going to do through portal and all it it will be big change you have to do each one may point and click you have to go across each vm and you have to do the changes and all through the uh, through this iac it will be much faster okay so your time to 
uh, and the changes time uh, are, are less. Okay. And uh, it, again, the infrastructure, the life cycle management point, which we discussed, that was one of the pain point. So that that also is addressed because uh, even if there is no documentation for the environment, like what are servers, which VNet, which subnet it is using, which VPC and all these things. But when you see the infrastructure as a code, you will come to know that, okay, what are the link, what are the things are there, which all, what are the links, linked components are there, what, where are the hands of happening? So in that way, you know what will be the impact if we decommissioning it. Okay, it will it will be much easier uh, process to decommission that uh, through the IAC. Okay. And uh, changes again, changes to the infra doing through the IAC is is much faster. Okay. So, and I told you that uh, uh, currently Terraform is not only one player. Okay, there there are multiple other. Uh, cloud providers as well, like the cloud formation is there from AWS, Azure Resource Manager is there, okay, Azure Resource Manager templates are on templates or Puppet, Ansible, different, a lot of different things are also there. So why we need to uh, go for HashiCorp Terraform, we will see, okay. And uh, again, to make the things more complicated, you know, there are so many cloud providers like to Azure, AWS and Google are the main primary ones which we hear more often. Okay. But companies are again exploring all the other ventures as well, the IBM Cloud, Alibaba Cloud, Rackspace, Digital Ocean. Okay. So it again, they, they are becoming like our phone or broadband utility companies. Okay. So they, there is no upfront cost and all. And uh, you are getting charged whatever you will use. Okay. So if there is some price differences there, if some if you see a major price price benefit, you may try, you will be tempted to go to the other cloud vendor. Okay. So that is one of the uh, point which uh, Terraform makes it much simpler. So the first of the primary advantage of Terraform is it is cloud agnostic or you can say cloud neutral. Okay, so it sits on top of all the cloud layers. Okay, so you don't have to know the ARM template or the uh, or the AWS cloud formation and all because it is sitting on top of that layer. So whatever you are coding, you have to do it in Terraform way, that's it. And underneath cloud can be anything, okay? Either you you do this, you apply the changes to the Google Cloud or the AWS or the uh, or the Azure and all. So it it makes it easier to shift from one cloud to another, okay? So therefore, if you see nowadays, a uh, lot of requirements will be there where 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 t where companies are moving towards multi-cloud. So earlier, in two to three years ago. The companies were experimenting. Okay, let's see. Let's move our development to cloud and see how it is happening and all. So once they move the development, yeah, it's very good, very efficient. It's yeah, time to market is reduced and all. It's very good. So let's do the production. So now production is also there. So now they're going to the next higher level. Okay, how do we use multiple vendors now in cloud? So each company may have, uh, maybe using Azure, they want to explore AWS. Okay, or want to explore GCP because the cost will be lesser in GCP for some things, some services cost will be lesser in Azure. So they're experimenting in that way. So now if you are if you are not using Terraform, then what you have to do is you have to train your existing uh, uh, sysadmins or the or the provisioning teams for each each and every tool, right? If you are in AWS, you have to, they have to learn that tool. If you are there using GCP, they have to go through and go through GCP side and all. Or Azure, similarly in Azure, if you're in Azure, then again, you have to learn everything in the Azure side. So again, it's a it's a pain point. So, but if you are using Terraform, you have to know only Terraform. Okay, either you underneath whatever cloud is there, you don't have to know in depth for that. So that is one of the primary benefit. It is it is cloud agnostic. Okay. So it is mainly used, the, it is main, main selling point is the provisioning part. Okay, uh, sell, uh, the provisioning and, and the life cycle management, you can say. The whatever environment you are building, you are you are managing the entire life cycle through Terraform only. Okay, so that that is the first point, and uh, so in in DevOps, uh, you can say in DevOps uh, terminology in the DevOps big picture, th this is one of the components. This is one of the tick mark you can say. Okay, or if I am applying for a a job in in the DevOps side, so I have to. There, there are so many tick points, tick marks you need to do. This is one of the primary main point, okay, which which uh, uh, the 
the openings are there in that. So let me go to the next slide. Okay, here. So Ranjit, uh, this is Chinmay here. Before, yeah, Chinmay. before we go forward, I have a query actually. Uh, you mentioned like Terraform is cloud agnostic and I would say even the tool agnostic. Mm -hmm. uh, keeping that in mind, do we have any ready-made templates somewhere, maybe at the Terraform marketplace or at some repository where we can download those templates and simply plug in uh, with our uh, specific resources also and just- Yes, 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 yes. yeah, 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 it's there. So we will do it, in, cover it in the modules, okay. So one thing is either you create it, but that was a very good question. One thing, either we create it from, from scratch, you build your own resources from scratch using resources or use the ready-made modules okay so we will so whatever questions you have asked it, the answer is the modules okay so that, that we will cover in in very detail in in that uh, modules topic okay and uh, uh, yeah. so terraform uh, is is offered by the company called hashicorp okay so hashicorp is the vendor it is the company who developed the terraform and the company is the company is founded in 2012 and uh, terraform the first version came in july 2014 you can see okay and in this few years since there, there are multiple revisions have gone okay industry wide it has very good acceptance and a lot of big interest like uh, quite uh, fortune 500 companies are using these tools and uh, a lot of revisions have happened so it is it is very dynamic very evolving okay in that and the language which we will use is hcl it is called the hashicorp configuration language that that is the coding language which we are going to learn okay you can also use json as well but the json is not that very human friendly i would say so uh, nobody's i prefer the coding in the json one for this so they all go for the hcl which is more user friendly the current latest version is uh, 1.0, whatever I've seen in the June. It, it has got 1.1, I, I think, maybe latest one. Uh, but there are no major changes uh, since uh, 15, 0 0.15. There are no major changes for that. So since 0 0.12, there are major changes happened. The completely the, the product was redesigned, okay, top to bottom uh, from... 0.12 onwards. So whatever we are going to learn will be on the new newer version. Okay. There won't be any major changes like whatever we are going to learn in the in the resources wide module wise. Either you can take 0.13 or you do 0.15 or version one dot anything that shouldn't be a major, shouldn't be any issue. Yeah. So I hope you can see the screen right. Yeah. So uh, I told you Terraform first point is the IAC. It is the cloud agnostic. Okay. And we know it is a dec declarative language. Okay. Where we are not telling it to do each line by line. We will tell the end goal. What will be our end goal should look like. Okay. And uh, it is again used by the top enterprise class companies and very evolving. We saw the versions. It has gone through many revisions, many updates. And it supports on-premises builds as well. So you know, if uh, the organization is still using VMware and all, you can, yes, you can manage the resources of VMware using Terraform as well. Okay. And there is a vast marketplace presence in the Terraform registry. So uh, in, in that, uh, we will, we'll, we saw that it, it has currently, it has thousand plus uh, modules available in that. So it is a very wide community support also there. Okay. And the flavors which is offered by Terraform is it has got an open source as well as paid products. Okay, paid products is the Terraform cloud is there and Terraform enterprise TFE is also there. Okay. So all the fundamental programming is same across open source or the cloud or the Terraform. Okay, so in one of them towards the end of the module, we will see the uh, differences between all that. So TFE is the license version is there terraform cloud we yes we can create our own account there is a limitation for that for uh, uh, for 10 projects and all we can we can go ahead and we can create it so we will mainly practice uh, in the open source uh, terraform and it has got easy integration with the azure devops pipeline and i put one graph uh, this is the 
Google metrics for the search search metrics for the Terraform uh, tool. So you see like how the trend is it it is in in terms of the millions. Okay, it is it is growing and growing. Okay, the interest for that since 2016. And the company valuation also, you can see whatever it started in 2016, the valuation of the company is now within 4.6 billion crossed. Okay. So growth wise, the, it is both are in the growth trend. And taken some snippets on the LinkedIn uh, site for the Terraform posting for the entry level for the last month. So it is, I think the whole screen is not showing. Yeah, so it has 775 openings kind of. So if I see the little bit experience position, there are 2000 plus. So in, in job in job terms also in market, it's a quite a good uh, demand is there for this tool. Okay. Okay, so our course duration will be around 30 hours. Okay, we will cover more time on the entry and the mid level, and we will touch based on the advanced concepts as well. And we'll cover all the topics related to certification. We'll ensure that, okay, at least we have a baseline of the topics given by the uh, HashiCorp. So we'll, we'll check that, okay, we are covering all those doing that. Okay, and Git and Azure DevOps, we are not going to cover entire thing. We are going to cover only the thing which is needed for our Terraform, okay, which for our environment provisioning. So ho hope that is clear. Any any queries on this slide, or in the past earlier slide? So, so this is not in entirely like if, uh, from a uh, entire course. It will, if this thirty hours will not cover everything, right? Uh, sorry, I did not. It, it is advanced touch base means only. Yeah. Yes. The advanced one. What, no, what my question is: the... you you uh, like touch base on advancement, the advanced programming of uh, Terraform, it will not cover, right? Only no, they, they, the intermediate they, level, right? Once programming is not there, so programming will cover everything. Okay, so whatever Terraform as a programmer you have to do, yeah, we will cover everything. Now the advanced part is what to create a very advanced three-tier or architecture with multiple endpoints and all. Okay, or integrating that in a pipeline, everything, or doing it through a TFE mm -hmm. through Terraform Enterprise and all. So some points uh, due to our lab constraint or that we cannot. We have to do theory basis. And wherever possible, yes, we, we can cover that. Mm -hmm. But it won't be very extensive. Our focus will be mainly on the Terraform side. Okay. But programming side, you don't have to worry. Like all the modules we will cover. Mm -hmm. Okay. To do your day-to-day -day job in the in the Terraform to create to create any any resource like whatever you as a Terraform programmer or the DevOps programmer you have been asked, you can do that. Okay. Then that will ensure. Sir, any weekends, any workshops on the weekend, sir? Uh, for the course wide, I will give you the number. Amit will be there. So Amit will coordinate all that uh, durations, uh, the timing and schedule. He will, towards the end of the this demo, I will give you that. Okay. And okay. what all? Uh, yeah. So yeah, yes. Maruti, Maruti just mentioned in the same question. So yeah. this will be the weekend batch or weekdays batch? Uh, for the so that... side, uh, Amit will clarify. I will give you his number. After this uh, session, I will write down the number and he will clarify for the uh, schedule time because you have to see he has to adjust all the other attendees as well right so he has to check with them by whichever is the best timing is coming he will adjust that so okay okay okay, okay. so yeah. so is it is it possible that uh, it is possible that you can invite the amit on the same call so that the every will be the aware on the uh, no same. amit is on a separate call right now one more call is happening on so he, he's on that so i will give his number you can whatsapp him on the, on the same group only Okay. So Ranjit, okay. The, I have a question like you are not covering in this course, this Docker and uh, container and Kubernetes and all, right? No, no, no. This, so, this is not covered. This is purely on the Terraform side. Okay. In, in the in the Terraform... You know, I understood, but that uh, there are also the resources and which is demanding and people will work on the, those resources, right? Yes, yeah. So, so I think part it will be do, better like... if you can... Con Yes. Consider uh, those things like Docker container and this Kubernetes. Include if you can include in this course. Really. Uh, maybe Docker, but uh, the thing is that there are many such. Okay, so maybe how to uh, provisioning all those? Yes, yes, yeah. So uh, 
our main aim of this course is to to make you able to create the resources okay how you can create the resources but again you saw there are thousand plus uh, providers available okay so like how amazon cloud is there aws google so everybody is giving their extensions for terraform okay so you can build lot of things in their cloud from terraform so again if you are saying for the docker kubernetes so some other participant will say okay i want that particular thing so we cannot it is not able to do everything okay so it this is not a course for the docker or the terraform or sorry or the kubernetes and all so what we can show you is like how you can create that using the resources okay so once you are capable to do that you can create any any resource mm. okay so that that you can do but it, it may not be like you you cannot do the administration the uh, for that it will be more on the provisioning side yeah what sorry what you said i am not telling about to uh, teaching docker container or kubernetes my intention is like if it can be included in for provisioning only like you, how we will be uh, included this vm provisioning and all oh. vm vnet networking and all so mm -hmm. like that uh, if, if it will be like uh, included for that docker container kubernetes also because th that uh, something which many organizations they are doing that right so For that provisioning only, it can kind of mention. Yeah, okay. So, so there are use cases. And another one thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, what was it, Kadi? So another thing is, I want to know, like the thirty hours course it will be. So in that thirty hour course, uh, like the students will get the chance to practice uh, all the thing. Uh, no, not the practice is not within thirty hours. Okay, so this. So, yeah. Suppose you will teach and we will not be able to practice, then it will be a problem. Yes, yes. So whatever, like uh, so the practice has, is the main thing, right? Yeah. So, so that's why I, the ingredients I told you, like okay, the here the slide is for the ingredients. What you need to be the to to do that. So first is practice. You have to give the time and effort. So if you think that okay, just I will come attend here, see the video, or I will see the recorded session, that is not going to work. Okay, so. so that's why practice is main time and effort you need to spend for that uh, that's why i am telling like there should be some time we, where people can uh, like student can practice in front of tutor right like you are tutor so oh. i am a student yeah so if you will practice in front of you you will give a programming thing suppose you you will give a use case yeah now i will practice in front of you that will be good that will give a good confident uh, to the people who will be participants right yeah, yeah correct so whatever use case will be there let's see like i i will show you the use case i will code the use case in front of you the code will be available to you in the github okay so maybe you want to practice in front or you can do it after the batch also that's fine that's up to you you take your time in the wherever there is gap you can practice that you can ping whatever errors are there it's coming or so in that way only it will do but each and every From because it is something it's uh, not uh, kind of a tool or no 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 i am not telling each and every student because i am telling like suppose you give a use case scenario for okay for one session and people will do their code and they can ask you like where they are uh, stopping and uh, if they are unable to do and all so that kind of things uh, because it is it is a language it's not a uh, tool or something that okay somebody will teach and idea. okay yeah, there is no boundary can, of it but, yeah. like how the uh, tool has boundary language actually it needs a really practice yeah okay so we will do one thing we will we'll dedicate one yeah. entire session like Because one, I, maybe weekly I once or something go to the less go to this timing yeah so what we can do maybe in one right. like weekly once or something we can schedule dedicate one in, like entire session for only your lab or Okay, or whatever queries are there, maybe I can give the use cases. That that's fine. Okay, We, there will be use cases every day. Yeah, the session either to... or yeah. you can increase the hours. Like, uh, yeah. like suppose ten yeah. hours, you can make it forty hours so that ten hours you can give for practice, so that uh, people will be more benefited. What I think, which it is my personal view. Okay, I'm not check with Amit sure right now. The, the, yeah, the timing so, schedule so, and all. Because if you, if somebody will practice in front of tutor, that will give a more confident to the students. Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay, let me. I will check with Amit and we'll see how because the scheduling hours, effort, and everything is given by Amit. Yeah, I mean, he decides that. Okay, so we'll check with that. 
and uh, for that the yeah, other people would yeah. get the fruit uh, uh, yeah, I, yeah that's I, what my intention yeah, said students should get the fruit whatever Correct. they are learning it there will be some element yeah. of so hand just, holding uh, will be there that if you talk to amit so there will be some level of hand holding mm -hmm. but not every day or, or because it will be difficult to take the entire batch or it so if everybody is coming del diligently on time and all they are practicing that that well and good okay so if it goes in that way it will be better i will check with amit uh, no no that they will do what i am telling like suppose you can give a one use case scenario and they will be doing yeah. their programming in front of you like so i'm in front of the computer so that they will more con hello hello i'm sorry to interrupt both of you i'm very sorry i think we are running out of time can we have this discussion offline please yeah yeah sure yeah sir, exactly sorry please, to uh, go through this uh, we are not uh, uh, first we have to understand what exactly you are telling so we can discuss this all later at the so, end if what was possible so uh, again going to the ingredients point the, we need the visual studio code okay software that is again free of cost terraform executable installer we will that is again free of cost and azure cloud account if you don't have azure maybe you can take aws also okay and uh, github account is free azure devops account is also free so this is again needed towards the end of the uh, towards the mi middle of the course and uh, installation as such uh, uh, from the terraform side we can directly down it it all gives all the flavor windows is there linux is there everything our practice will be mainly on the windows side okay there is no difference in command or anything like that so and uh, the installation is not like a big software installation okay just a executable if anybody has used putty command or any winzip command or like that it is like that only okay so here you see the it is just a one already prepared binary is there just the terraform so there is no way to there is nothing to install as such you can just put that in any folder you want and set your path variables okay and uh, then you can use it or either you can put it in the you, if you want you can put in the your system 32 windows folder and if you are doing that on the linux one just put that in in any folder again opt terraform there is only one install there is no rpm you don't have to install anything just one file that's it you just have to copy paste that file there that's it then it is done the installation is done okay. so once the installation is done like uh, sorry the next tool which we are going to know is the the visual studio code okay so uh, i will take the visual studio code uh, installation separately uh, during when the actual class will be happening okay so it just a id like it is not a uh, complicated software as such if anybody have you has you have used bash programming bash shell through that or python and all they might have used the uh, this visual studio code okay so all our coding will be done through the uh, this visual studio code uh, for example let's see once once our uh, terraform is is installed okay so first there are, there are couple of commands are there which we will use day in day out okay so those are will be uh, the terraform uh, init terraform plan and terraform apply okay and terraform destroy so these four set of commands uh, we will use mainly day in day out okay so i will show one sample code like how to do that okay and again these all things we are going to learn in lot of detail later so how the command block will be how the programming language how the syntax will be there that we will again learn i'm just giving you a just like what is the what are the possibilities what it can do i'm just showing you that okay so for example let's say i have to create a resource group in in azure okay maybe many of you are familiar with the azure side so how to create a resource group okay so so there will be some standard syntax will be there which will be common to all the all that so this is one terraform block is there so this 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 entire block is common to all the programs so whichever programs we are doing it will be common so we we are using that azure rm okay so now 
this azure rm is a provider okay so in depth again we will check this i am just giving a highlight at this point we won't go in in developed detail so let's see how to create a resource group so we will we'll use the specific block then we will declare the provider block so some things will be static like most of the time it will be all common so these blocks i would say is common all the time okay and depending on the on the thing which we are going to make maybe we are going to create a vm or maybe we are going to create a rg maybe we are going to create a vnet or subnet this block will keep on changing okay so here for example we are going to create a resource group so we we did a resource and resource group and uh, this is the name of the resource group the variable name local name and the actual resource group name will be this one and the location we have given so once our code is ready so first will be uh, terraform in it so at, at this point don't get worried as such like here i'm just giving a, a very high level uh, view of it not not going in depth okay. so after that what we will do is terraform plan so what terraform plan will do is it will go and and see okay what what it is going to what what changes it is going to do to achieve the desired state so this is our desired state our desired state is that we should have a resource group in azure okay whose name is test rg okay, that that is our desired state so terraform plan will 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 uh, will uh, do the will check the code and it will see okay what changes are needed to achieve that desired state so here it is showing that okay um, i think already i had some so i think in past i in the last session i already used that uh, resource group so it was there i think it's destroyed so while it is destroying so we will quickly go jump back to the session okay so a terraform we downloaded the code right we downloaded the binary so that is the terraform core okay that binary itself is the core which which have some functionality which it will do something and there are then comes the plugins okay so if i have to do something on azure or if i have to do something on google or if i have to do something on aws uh, i will use the plugins for the each of the uh, cloud provider okay so these are called as uh, providers the terraform plugins so based on the need only it will go and download that bit of software so they, that makes it very modular okay the point uh, 0.12 uh, version or before that the terraform was not modular everything was there inside the same big executable so that's why it was very slow at that time it was very heavy very bulky so then a complete redesign redesign happened in the point 12 onwards and it, it became modular so now it is uh, based on your requirement it will download the plugin so if you are in your code if there is a component to be built in azure yes it will automatically go to hashicorp it will download the azure rm resource provider and it will build it will build the resources okay so these two components are there and so the the core what it will do the core has some responsibilities like it will uh, read your code it will interpolate it whatever variables are there it will read it and it will create a dependency graph okay so let's say your code has a lot of things vnet subnet a public ip pm interface nic all these things are there so how it is going to do it will we don't have to explicitly tell that okay how how to do it but when we are creating in the portal ourselves we have to ensure that we are maintaining the dependency okay first we go we create the either the vpc or the vnet then we create the subnet okay then we create the vm all all that we do but here terraform will automatically uh, manage the dependencies okay there is also a uh, option given for us to explicitly define the any dependencies okay so it will do that uh, so this is the role of the terraform core terraform core will do that and it will communicate with the plugin or the provider through the rpc so this this is the role of the terraform core and a lot of things will be done by the plugin or the provider okay and the provider plugin both are uh, written in the go language and on need basis it will be invoked okay. so let's see till now
So first we do the Terraform init. So when we do the init, it goes through our code and it checks, okay, what all things needs to be built. So here in the example we are showing, we are going to build a Azure, something in Azure. Okay, that's it. And here it will see, okay, what Azure RM. Okay, Azure RM is our provider. So it will go and download the Azure RM provider. Okay, and it will keep it inside the dot uh, terraform folder. It will create a folder in the Azure RM and it will uh, and it will create uh, like it, it is a binary file, it is not showing here, but it will download everything in the dot terraform folder uh, here. So next we go to Terraform plan and uh, there we are going to check there it will check okay, what all things are needed to achieve the desired state. Okay, so here it is showing that okay, one to add in our desired state, there is the resource group has to be added. So yes, we will go and so all looks fine. There is no nothing as destroy or something when you're working on an enterprise level or something or project you have to religiously you have to check this output okay what is that might be you are referring some other code and also you have to carefully see okay it is changing or destroying or adding so it will it won't do anything unless we tell so here it is just telling that okay uh, it will it is going to do these things okay so then we have to finally do terraform apply so when we say terraform apply it will go and do the changes so that our desired state looks the same as per our code. So our code says that there should be a resource group with this name as test RG. So there will be some commands. Uh, yeah, we have just confirms it. We can auto confirm it also. No? So here again, it is giving a review that okay, these are the changes. So looks fine. Looks fine to me. Okay, we'll go. Yes. So here now it will through the provider, whatever provider it downloaded Azure RM, it will go and it will do the changes on the Azure side. Okay. So I don't have to learn the Azure as such like uh, how to create the resource group through the ARM template and all. I can do it through this way. Okay, so here it showed that one resource got added and zero changed, zero destroyed. So let's go in the backend Azure side and uh, check, check it as well. Yeah, so here the test RG is created. So again, we are managing the entire life cycle of it. So when a resource is managed by Terraform, it's not advised or it is, it is not a best practice to change it in the backend, okay, from, from this from, from this side. So let's say if I create some VM inside that resource group and all, and that is not managed by Terraform. So if I do a Terraform destroy and all, it will go ahead and remove whatever is there inside that. So, so in the industry wide, wherever uh, there is, a, there is Terraform used. So what they do, they segregate the subscriptions or the or the projects completely. Okay, they won't uh, manually do the changes in backend. Okay. Here I'm just uh, destroying the infrastructure which I just created. So this is a very initial, very simple example to see how we are we are creating our resource in the cloud. Okay. So it doesn't mean that okay we can we are limited to the uh, Azure. We can create uh, here. It is showing that okay our resource group will be created. Oh sorry, will be destroyed. So here in this way we have managed the entire life cycle. We created it and we destroyed it after that. We could have done the changes as well. We could have done the changes in the location or anything. So that also is possible through that. So let's go to the a little bit next example. Let me just comment it. Okay, because when Terraform, when it's when we are running Terraform, it, it searches for the Terraform code entire in the entire folder. Okay. So 
now let's let's go to the uh, gcp side so let's say your requirement is uh, the some project is there which wants to create something on the a vm on the gcp oh sorry on, on the google cloud yeah same so again the terraform block will be same like how it is there the terraform block is there but the provider will change okay now the provider will be google okay it is again all are provided by hashicorp so it it will be the same and uh, the provider will change to google so here our provider block provider block as such will be there but there will be slight change uh, from the azure rm if you see here the project will be there okay so in google there is a concept of project so each everything all the resources will sit in some project so that project we have to define here and again our vm it will be a resource this resource the, our google compute instance this is our local name of this code block and this will be the, our actual server name our actual vm name okay in this zone we have to create our project name is learn this this one learn code 21 and, and tags we are giving some tags and the os image we have taken is debian cloud okay. so again our same repeated code will be there, like commands will be there terraform init what init will do it will it will see our entire program and it will check okay what all things uh, what all plugins i would need to achieve the target state so here it is checking the provider is google where to get it you have to get it from here this place so it will go and it will download that okay so i think here also and it inherent it keeps a state like whatever we have created it keeps the, all the metadata in a state file which we are going to uh, in, in very detail in one of the topic so let's clean it so when we destroy that it from one of the infrastructure from the azure one and we are going to a different one let's start from the complete scratch where we are removing everything and we will create a new plan completely Here, each and every file we will check in detail uh, during the module. When we did the Terraform in it, let's see to see it. Okay, so here it has downloaded the Google uh, provider. So when we do a Terraform plan, now it is showing what are changes is intended to be done to achieve our desired state. So here the Google compute instance will be created. So once we say the Terraform apply, it will go ahead and create that. So 
I would say at, at this point, we'll go for another example because the Terraform apply takes a little bit more time to create that VM. But again, in this example, we saw that, okay, we, we can do any cloud, okay, after based on the change in the provider, if you have to do something on the Google Cloud, we can change the required providers here and you know, your provider here, and then you're ready to go. You can you can do the changes there. Okay. So again, we have one more example in the AWS as well. We'll just touch base on the example. We may not create the actual resource, but we will see what all it is going to do to achieve the desired state. Hope the example is giving you some more insight that what you all can do with that. Okay, with, with little changes and all, you can do, you can achieve your, uh, you can create your resource. Okay. So for example, I want to create something on the AWS instance. Okay. Uh, so again, the Terraform block will be same. Here again, our provider will change to the Hashicorp AWS and uh, here the change in provider, the region has changed, the region we have changed. And in the resource block, uh, we are giving the, to achieve that VM, whatever resources are needed, we are giving that. And uh, these all code we will, we will go through in, de in depth, in detail for each line by line in the upcoming classes whenever it's there. So here it saw that the change is in the AWS. So it is downloading the latest AWS one. Okay, so once it downloaded the AWS plugins provider, so now it is ready to do the changes. So we'll do only the Terraform plan. So each command again, during the course phase, we will see what, what all it does in the backend, okay? So here it is going to say that it is going to add one, one component is going to add, that is the VM, and the IP address will be known after the apply phase is done. After it is really built, then only we will come to know the, uh, know the uh, IP address, okay? So again, let, let's leave it for this one. So I'm not building that because again, building will take time for this one. So let's see again the next example. Uh, Azure one also also similar. So what we can do in we'll take it to the next level. We will see is it possible to maybe in one piece of code you can you can create Azure VM and AWS VM or anything like a mix and match. Can you do all these sort of things? So why not? So let's test that. Okay. So whatever two separate things we done maybe AWS and the Azure we will mix it here. So we we will have one. Uh, one component from AWS and one component from Azure. Okay, so in, in one code only we are giving the two multiple providers and uh, creating one server from AWS and creating one server from Azure. Okay. And again, our commands will be day in day out. We will use init, plan, apply, and destroy. So these are the four main commands which we'll use more. There are other commands as well, uh, which will be relatively less used okay. or used on the need basis. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Ranjit, uh, can you just, uh, what are the resources you're creating? Yeah, we are creating AWS instance and Azure VM as well in one single code. Okay, uh, I mean uh, Azure Reserve Group and uh, AWS uh, yeah, uh, VM, right? Yeah, Azure VM as well oh. and the AWS VM. So here the Azure side, everything we are creating in that. Azure VNet we are creating, Azure Subnet we are creating, NIC, mm. public IP, okay. and then assigning that to the okay. VM. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. So here it, it will show you that, okay, we are going to do seven, seven things, like seven components to be added. So here it will give all the, uh, all your uh, changes, like what, whatever it is going to do, it will tell you, okay. So this is very important point where um, in, in, in the actual organization where you're working on the projects, so you have to review all the changes, okay. So it is by mistake, it is not doing anything wrong or change or uh, destroy, maybe some, somebody else would have changed your code in between, okay. So that's a very good practice to navigate is to see what all changes it is going to do. Okay. So once you're happy with the changes and all, you can do that. So at this point I've canceled with, uh, because the build takes time. So 
we can take it again further that okay in one code itself we can have multiple okay so we we gave example of aws and azure so we in one code itself we will uh, finally see all the all the three instances okay so maybe a one vm from azure one vm from aws one vm from gcp okay so let's code that so our actual sessions will be like this more on the uh, practical part these all code will be given to you by the github all will be there and you can change you can do the code pool if you want you can change your own code apply it here so we'll follow the topics based on the certification or based on the topics which i told earlier but uh, more it will be like this way how we are going but in depth like each line by line analysis currently i'm showing you just a high level like 10000 foot overview how it how it is like what all we can do uh, through that okay so in this uh, one we are going to uh, we are going to build a azure aws and uh, gcp vm in one single piece of code in one code in one file itself one moment Okay, and uh, sorry, this example is uh, I have a little bit changed. Uh, this one, what we can we have given is we have given if we have taken an argument, okay, that we whichever uh, whichever uh, cloud we want the VM to be created, we can give that as an input. Okay, so let's say cloud equal to so based on that our uh, like you can make a generic code okay for all the cloud vms and also based on your requirement let's say one project is coming to you and asking you i need a vm on gcp you can do a variable based on that cloud equal to gcp or cloud equal to google it will create your vm in the uh google google cloud you can change your variables and and uh, do all that like that so uh, so it's quite handy so these all things we are going to uh, do in 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 very in depth detail the uh, in, in the variable section okay input variables output variables and data sources where we are going to see how we can do that so for this example we have given a uh, terraform plan we given input variable as cloud equal to azure okay so it is going to create a azure rm vm all the things whatever is needed for that okay so for example i can do the same with google so i will have a generic piece of code where based on the arguments based on the input variables i can change the outcome how it, it will be okay so th this is the somewhat all all these capabilities of that so the resource here for example we have taken the vm vnet subnet and all that gradually we will across when we go through that course uh, period we will will take more on that like uh, it will be web app will be there and uh, uh, docker container also we can take in that and depending on the use cases we will go go through that uh, storage storage account key vault all those we will create in that So these are all things in there. Let me see. Yeah. Go back to the session once. So in the examples we saw, like we are creating from uh, our code piece. Oh, sorry. Uh, we see the flow. The the workflow is like that. We we write our plan. We write our code. Okay. We do a Terraform in it. Then do the Terraform plan, and uh, then apply the Terraform. And finally we destroy that whatever infrastructure we are doing. okay so that's why our like usually our own uh, if you if you have your own cloud accounts pay as you go and all so billing wise it will be very less so we are using just to see how our flow is there once it is proven we will immediately we will destroy it okay so from billing point of view also it won't be very very high it will be just few few like uh, 100 100 or 200 rupees like that it will be there so even i used from last one two weeks also i have not got much in that so you can uh, take it uh, a uh, trial session trial uh, uh, 
for the azure uh, azure account or or aws and all it should be fine it won't be very high cost it will be initially some days there are freeze free is there and uh, even if you are doing on a pay as you go subscription as well for azure the cost will be very less for whatever we practice so that yeah so these all commands we saw currently init plan apply destroy okay and how each is working internal working of that the flow and all we will see more in the actual class and uh, those are the main commands in highlighted there are several other commands are there some some relatively less used commands these all we will practice in that okay what are the use case when we will run these commands workspaces state all these we will practice okay so i think at this point the demo session quite extended so any any queries uh, on this session or in general or anything you want to highlight yeah that's one thing i think amit will be the free now so if you pull him and you decide the what will the session timing that will be great actually yeah yeah so uh, 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 ranjit one for again yeah yeah uh, one generic question okay so let's say like you know if you want to create uh, i mean we have created one resource group for azure mm -hmm. okay and uh, if you want to create the same in uh, uh, you know uh, a pre prod or a prod environment mm -hmm. so how will you push the changes actually from from the dev to prod actually uh, Change like means, whether you will be using a pipeline or something or how it will be no, uh, yeah, yeah. In, initially in our yes yeah till the middle of the uh, course we will we will directly do everything on the command line okay we are not going to do through the pipeline mm. because it becomes it, it takes mm. it takes the uh, it makes it a little bit slow slower when we practice and you know, we want very immediate results whatever we are changing we want to see it immediately when as a new type mm -hmm. it want to see that okay so we will directly do it through the command line and towards the middle of the course i told you that we would need the git access and the azure uh, the, your uh, sorry devops azure devops okay correct, access correct, in that correct, correct. so correct. once it is there we will we will practice that so we will have end to end like because in industry you go uh, they, they will ask more on the git in the entire flow okay so we will see a flow of that how you are how you are writing your code locally you push it into the git and then git will uh, your your azure devops will fetch that your pipeline will fetch it from the git it will see the changes and it, then it will do the build and apply okay it will create the release pipeline and it will apply that so we will see the entire flow uh, but for each and every use case we may not see it okay we want to know only the flow okay because our main aim is to get to know the terraform everything we have to do so which will be in very mm -hmm. quick session like how we did now you do the changes in the code immediately practice it like do whatever commands is there that in that way it will be is there but yes we will we'll cover that as well mm -hmm. let me one second let me get the mic number Ranjit, hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, Ranjit, we are covering complete uh, syllabus of uh, uh, Terraform certification, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I've given the link as well in the initial, initially, and time to time, like each module, we will ensure that okay, we are not deviating uh, from that. Okay. So okay. definitely that will be there, and uh, uh -huh. I am already uh, certified in the Terraform Associate. Okay. okay okay then that so your guidance this, will help yeah. us to clear out yeah, yeah. thank so you ranjit, one doubt ranjit so in certification point of view yeah. like uh, whether uh, if you are following uh, azure okay mm -hmm. so I, i think this uh, the certification is uh, mainly focused on aws side right or we can choose uh, azure or aws no certification is not focused on any cloud okay certification is focused on core terraform only Okay, core so Terraform it, it, yeah, it is focused on core Terraform. So using that core Terraform knowledge, you can do anything in Azure, any cloud. Okay, so maybe your your organization is maybe working in IBM cloud or or Oracle cloud. Okay, who knows? So you mm -hmm. can do directly there. So certification is is purely vendor neutral. Okay, so it doesn't mm -hmm. give you anything in that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so this is the number uh, of Amit. I currently pinged him, so he's not yet responding. Okay. So, so you can you can note down his number. So for the uh, session duration, timelines, and all, like he will take care. He will based on the all the uh, persons are there. So 
based on their views you can adjust that i asked him to join but uh, i think like he, he there is one more parallel power bi session is also going i think so he's into that okay any more queries to, uh, for for the course Hey, I have I have ping to him. I think he is going to join the session. Ah, uh, one more thing. Uh, can I just mm -hmm. show that uh, uh, syllabus once more? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Because I joined late. <laughs> oh, hello. Hi, Ranjit. Hello. Hi, Amit. Yeah, yeah, Amit. Uh, Ranjit, tell me. Yeah, Amit, there are some queries from people that uh, the course duration if they can increase. So currently, it is thirty hours. So they want more practical basis. Like one, like. Uh, Like where the student will uh, some use case will be given and student will do and it will be in uh, in that so in that way it will increase the um, duration from thirty to forty hours maybe like that so that uh, they want to check if it is feasible or not. Okay, okay, we can plans and we can update the students. Okay, in our WhatsApp. Yeah, uh, hi, Amit Maruti here. One question for you. Uh, what will be the duration for this batch it's 30 hours but it is in weekdays or weekend when we are going to conduct the batch do you have any idea for this planning for the 30 hours or if it is required for the any more hours so we can update no. okay 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 and we we are planning the batch on weekdays or weekend only how it will be uh, the both days are available so it depends upon the students majority we can plan the um, weekend and weekdays also okay okay Yeah, because for me, I'm looking in weekdays only, so that the very soon, as soon as possible, course will get the. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay, I've given the topics. Uh, there was a query, I think, from someone, right? Uh, sorry. Yes, and then the last question from my side is that: uh, Can you share the fee structure for this? Again, fee structure will be Amit will be there, so I am the trainer, so Amit will take care of that. Yeah, Amit, please can you help us on this? Ah, uh, it's a uh, no. I I I charge everyone for the ten k. It's fixed. Okay. 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 Uh, so, uh, any more queries, or we are fine to go to close that close this demo session? Yeah, that's uh, all. My question. Sorry, there was a question. Yeah, uh, we are uh, mainly uh, more concentrating on Azure or AWS uh, for all the examples here. Yeah, yeah. So, it again, like today in the demo session, you saw we we shown the examples on all the three cloud. Okay, but this okay. Google as well as AWS or Azure. so it mm -hmm. doesn't like whichever cloud uh, subscription you have already so let's say you already have a trial account for azure it, it's good you can practice on that only okay our our examples will be through that okay like our examples will be resource creating a vm okay we can create a vm okay. in azure you can create go ahead and create in gcp and all it doesn't matter so whichever you are comfortable whichever you have already uh, the subscription available with you you can do that okay but uh, uh, let me uh, amit r is is there any like do you provide the uh, any cloud subscription or is the students they will get that right on their own yeah students will get that i think so whichever you have so i am also using the pay as you go only from the aws or gcp so gcp gives 90 days free azure also has has free in that 30 days so now whichever is there so you, are, you can do our examples will be switching on both actually aws as well as azure okay both primarily both aws and azure yeah thank you ranjit okay, okay then uh, thanks everyone so we'll we'll wind up the call then okay if there are no further queries thank you all thank you bye bye thank you